a big 4x4 or truck, you probably think big wheels with big chunky mud terrain off-road tyres look cool and, well, much like on this Ford F-150 Raptor, they do. But if your vehicle only ever sees the streets and doesn't ever come off-road or see mud or sand or gravel, what compromise are you making to your car day to day? Do you turn it into a liability? To find out, I've teamed up with off-road specialist General Tyre. Thanks to General, we've four different types of tyre to test and in two sizes. The four tyres on test are all being tested in exactly the same 265-70R17 size. Representing the street tyre is the General Grabber HGS60. This is the most on-road biased tyre of the group. The mild all-terrain tyre is the General Grabber APT, which is a little bit more aggressive than the HGS60. Whereas the Grabber ATX is General's latest aggressive all-terrain tyre with a blockier tread pattern. Finally, we have the General Grabber X3, which is the heavily constructed mud terrain tyre. We also have an LT315-7017 version of the X3 on test, so we have the added bonus of seeing the differences between small and big tyres on various surfaces. Thanks to our location in Texas, a General's insane test facility for off-road tyres, we can test most aspects of a tyre's on and off-road performance. We can do mud, dirt, gravel, we can do dry and wet, we can look at comfort and noise, and this should give you a really well-rounded approach as to which is the best tyre for your own personal usage and application in the real world. Unlike other tests, all our testing is designed to replicate real-world usage, but conducted in private specialist facilities where we are able to push the tyres to their absolute maximum in a safe environment. Now, there's going to be a lot of information pulled from this test, and sadly, not all of it can make the video. Otherwise, the video would just be a 30-minute bore fest. So I'll leave a link in the description to the Tire Reviews website where I'll put every piece of information we get. And if you want more information by the end of the video, feel free to give it a like, don't forget to subscribe and click through to that link and find out everything you want to know about this test. First up, the difficult dirt testing. Okay, so first test of the day is dirt. And I'm just going to spend a brief moment telling you why dirt testing is both quite difficult and quite fun because I am drifting a Raptor around a dirt course. So dirt testing needs a consistent surface as with any surface as in dry and wet but as you're driving on it the, the surface is changing so this dirt course this is Texan gumbo this is a very hard Texan dirt and to prepare this surface General Tire have been watering it and compacting it for over a week just to get the surface right so as you're driving lap after lap the surface doesn't groove up too badly however it still does groove up which means when you're testing you have to get everything done within the first couple of laps otherwise it changes and then the surface just has to be combed over to make sure every tire gets the same kind of surface it's that kind of lens general tire have gone to to make sure their dirt testing is the best in the world okay so how did the tires fare on this fairly compact dirt surface well hts for me the surprise of the day the road tire did surprisingly well it held its own it felt relatively sporty had good lateral stability and good steering reaction with good balance so it got affected a little bit more on the loose stuff than the other three tires but that's to be expected from a road tire but no really good and wasn't the slowest of the day interestingly moving on to the mild all-terrain tire the apt uh, things did get faster but not in a way i assumed i assumed the blockier tread pattern and the more all-terrain governance of the tire would mean the tire was better everywhere and whether the apt gained over the hts was in braking and traction but it lost a little bit out in both steering precision and uh lateral lateral grip so around the corners it perhaps wasn't quite as grippy but in braking and uh, acceleration where you could get the weight transfer and moved it was better than the on-road tire about 2% faster, I'll put the times on screen. The ATX, the aggressive all-terrain tire, again, it kind of built on where the APT built on the HTS. Added on the brakes a little bit more, the steering got a little bit more woolly and less sporty, but you're probably not gonna worry too much about that on dirt. Um, and it posted an ever so slightly faster time. But moving on to the X3, the big chunky blocky mud terrain tire, this was the surprise for me. The X3 was the slowest of the bunch. And why is that? Well, it's a mud terrain tire and this is dirt. They're very different. You couldn't really play with it as much. It didn't definitely didn't have as much lateral stability, but it was quite good in traction and braking. Moving on to the big chonky X3, the bigger tyre of the mud terrains, that's interesting. So that brought back the time so it matched the ATX. So by putting more rubber in contact with the surface, 
you've improved your time. So the bigger tire, score one for the guys that like putting big tires on their SUVs and pickup trucks, because it looks cool, it does. But also, it does offer more grip. This is the balance on this hard mud surface, very close between the top three, then the X3 drops down a little bit. But moving on to gravel, which is the next test, that's the much softer, looser surface. So that's where the bigger grooves and the more paddling effect should come into its own. So let's move over to gravel and let's see what happens there. So gravel testing. Do you think dirt testing was complicated? Wait till you hear about the lens general tire I've gone to to make gravel testing consistent. Gravel is a constantly evolving surface. As you drive on it on the road in the real world, the rocks and the stones split and get smaller and smaller. So to find out the exact right size of gravel, general tire have been around the world getting samples of gravel from everywhere you can think of to pick the exact right gravel size. If you're testing here flat out for a week, you're using four trucks, four trucks of gravel because all we're doing in this Raptor is spraying it into the bushes. This time, the HTS wasn't as much of a surprise. Uh, the steering felt slower than on dirt. The car reacted slower and just felt heavier. Although the steering and the kind of vehicle weight was a trend that followed through all four of the tires, not just the HDS. It just gravels slower to react. The HDS does feel like it rolls more on the surface of the gravel rather than digging in, where the other tires just felt like they dug in. The mild all-terrain tire, the APT, um, similar steering response, little bit more traction, little bit more side force, and more grip in the corners. It's just maybe a little bit more controllable, but quite loose on the rear, more so than the HTS. The HTS was seemed really well balanced, but these are minor differences. The um, switch into the ATX, the aggressive all train, that's when you get a good step up. You feel like you've got way more traction on way more braking, and that just allows you to understand the car more and place the car more where you want it to go. And then moving to the X3, this is where the extra blocks do really help because they dig into the gravel and gravel onto gravel bonding like you'd get in snow. And this gave the car way more brakes and way more traction, but uh, it didn't seem to have any more side force. So uh, it wasn't that much quicker than the ATX, but you just felt more confident using it. And that's, that's the difference between subjective and objective testing. Objective gives you a number, whereas subjective gives you the feeling the car gives you. And if you're not a super confident driver, that's worth more than an extra half, 10 second. And moving on to the big X3, that didn't actually post a faster time, but it felt like it should have. Now, that might not make any sense, but it felt like it had more traction and braking, some more longitudinal grip. The Raptor, although it's 410 horsepower and a 6.2 V8, and it's the old school one, not the turbo one, it felt like it didn't have enough power to overpower the rear and get the slip you need again. So with more power, I feel like the bigger tire would have done better. And now we've done these two, we're gonna switch to wet and dry and sort of NVH, and why? Because mud, destroys vehicles, it destroys tires, it destroys everything. And we're having to leave mud testing till last, just in case this beautiful barge of a Raptor uh, ends up dead. Um, so a bit of a risk, but let's go on to wet handling uh, and then move on to dry NVH and then the final one, which I'm really looking forward to, mud. Wet testing. This is where the testing gets a little bit easier because we only have to wet the track. We don't have to worry about it between runs and the results become a little bit more logical. So during wet handling, I won't talk about it much because I'm sure the average Raptor owner doesn't chuck his car around at the limit in the wet. But wet handling does give us a good appreciation of how tires grip laterally and longitudinally and how they behave at the limit. And it all makes sense. The road tire was the best by quite a good margin. It was the sportiest tire the most direct tire, the nicest tire to drive on. And then every time you took a step towards the mud terrain tire, the most aggressive tire, the dynamics got a little bit worse and the grip sort of dropped off, although it was very close between the other three tires. I'll put the data on the screen. Wet braking, well, I'm afraid that is what it is. As you're adding void to the tire to allow it to grip in off-road conditions, you're taking away rubber from the surface, which is what you need in wet braking. And that's just how the tires are compromised. So the on-road tire had a significant advantage over the other three. And wet braking is one of those things you might need at the peak limit very infrequently, but when you do it, it's one of those really important times where you're reacting to an emergency situation. So bear this in mind, 
as you're fitting more cool looking, more aggressive, all train and mud train tires, you are compromising an aspect of the road driving. And if you spend a lot of time on the road, that might not be the smartest decision, even though it does look the best. So just keep that in mind when you're making your tire selection. Unsurprisingly, the Mud Terrain X3 dominated the aquaplaning testing with its huge blocky tread design evacuating water the most efficiently. Next up, we move to dry testing. Like wet handling, dry handling might not be entirely relevant to the average truck owner, but again, it does tell us much about the lateral stability of the tire and how much it grips during acceleration and braking and transient changes. There was a surprise during dry handling, the mild all-terrain tyre, the APT, was essentially the same time during dry handling as the road tyre, the HGS. And the road tyre did feel better and more sporty, but the all-terrain tyre did a very good job of clinging on. Now, as you would expect with the other two tyres, the aggressive all-terrain and the mud-terrain tyre, they did drop in time and but steering feel and feedback and everything you would expect like in wet. Uh, the dry braking data didn't quite follow the handling data, with the APT being the best of the rest, but not quite as close as the HGS, and so not as good as the on-road tire. And like in the wet, you're compromising braking performance by removing rubber from the tread pan and adding in void, which does give you that off-road performance. And MBH testing, which is noise, vibration, and harshness, effectively how loud a tire is and how uncomfortable or comfortable it is, this surprised me a bit more, and maybe that's just my naivety to the segment. Unsurprisingly, the HGS road tire was the most comfortable. It rounded off the bumps the most, it had the least noise in the cabin, and it was extremely comfortable and quiet. As you moved to the APT, the mild all-terrain, the comfort levels were almost unchanged, as was the noise levels. You got a tiny bit more noise when hard cornering, like I am now, but overall, it was very similar. So that was impressive, considering the tread pattern gets more blocky. Moving to the ATX, the aggressive all-terrain, again, there's a drop in comfort levels. You get a little bit more shimmy through the tire sidewalls, you crash over bumps, which does affect you in the cabin, and a little bit more cornering noise, but straight ahead, impressively quiet. And then the mud terrain tire, now this was the surprise. I've driven mud trains before on the road, and you just get that thrummy blah, 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 blah noise, which is just the worst noise in the world, and drives you insane after a while. But the X3, very, very quiet for a mud terrain tire. In a straight line, you could barely hear the difference. You could hear it, but you could barely hear the difference. And then there was more noise under cornering, but that was hard load cornering. So fair play to General for making a very quiet MT tire. The big X3, well, again, more rubber on the road in the handling test and the braking test meant it jumped up a class. So you've kind of like gained a class of tire and dry and wet performance by just putting more rubber on the road. And in comfort testing, it was broadly the same as the smaller X3. So the extra weight and the extra width didn't really add anything or take anything away for those two factors. Mud testing started with a bang, literally, as the Raptor decided four-wheel drive wasn't needed anymore and promptly got stuck in rear-wheel drive mode only. This meant we had to enlist the backup Nissan pickup, which sadly couldn't accommodate the larger 315 tyre size. Like with other services, mud testing takes weeks to prepare, but unlike other services where we can get good data within a couple of runs, mud testing needs repeating, and repeating, and repeating. Each set of tyres gets around 15 traction runs in the thick mud in both directions. The results? This one is easier to talk about in percentages. If the road bias HTS60 is our benchmark at 100%, the mild AT tyre sits around 120%, the aggressive AT tyre around 150%, and the MT tyre, unsurprisingly, is a huge step ahead at around 200% the traction ability of the hard terrain tyre. This is by far the biggest differences we've seen in all the testing. So what have we learned? Well, firstly, off-road testing, getting repeatable, reliable, consistent data is punishing and time consuming. We've spent six days doing this. We've broken two vehicles and countless amounts of camera equipment. So dust and mud just gets everywhere and it's so punishing. As for the tires, well, I think there's a clear trend at either end of the segment. If you're spending over 95% of your time on road, get the road tire. The HTS 60 was a remarkable road tire but it did have off-road performance. It wasn't astonishingly bad in gravel and on hard dirt like this, it was really fantastic. At the other end of the spectrum, if you do spend a lot of your time off-road, the mud terrain tire is your only choice. Even if the all-terrain tires got close to it in gravel and dirt performance, you've got to remember the extra benefit of a three-ply heavily constructed tire brings. So if you're in somewhere like Moab or Rubicon and it's midnight and you're cutting through rocks, the last thing you want is a puncture. So the heavier construction tire definitely has benefits outweighing what we found in these tests. 
What if you sit in the middle? What if you spend some of your time on road, some of your tire off road, and you go down dirt roads that sometimes end up muddy or you've got a long gravel drive? Well, hopefully this test has given you enough data, but if you want it qualified in numbers for now, maybe if you spend approximately 70% of your time on road and 30% of your time off road, fit the mild all-terrain tire. Whereas if it's a more 50-50 balance and you do do some semi-serious off-roading, the aggressive all-terrain tire is probably the tire for you. And as for the big wheel and tire combination, well, it turns out size does matter and the bigger combination often outperform the smaller. As always, link in the description, go and look at the data because there's plenty more that hasn't made it to this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It means a lot to me because there'll be plenty more truck, American off-road content to come, hopefully with the fixed Raptor. Please. And um, as always, safe motor.